Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Know How is brought to you by Landtronics, maker of the X Print server. Print from your iPad, iPhone, or any iOS device to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the offer code twit to receive free shipping on your order. Want to know how to make your videos look more professional? Today, you'll know how to make your own teleprompter. Welcome to Know How, the show where we show how to do things. That's I, as Actar, Leo Laporte. And this is kind of a fun one. You know, on the Twit Network, we never use teleprompters. Rarely. I think there's one show that does. Uh, the Game On used to. We bought some teleprompters for Game On. And Sarah uses it, I think, a little bit on uh, i5, right? Right. But, but generally, I don't like teleprompters because it takes away from the spontaneity. Now, when we were doing the screensavers... We would have teleprompters there because occasionally, you know, we'd have to read a 20 second or 30 second promo and they wanted it just so. Or we would have the bullet points in there. But if you're doing your own thing, a video podcast like you did with this old nerd, sometimes it's really handy to have a script and be able to read it. It saves you takes. It saves you time. And sometimes if the, com if the, if the ideas are complex, I know I was doing a show about dinosaur news. And this is actually why I built this thing at all years ago. Yeah. This is my old version of this. See what this is that? Box? This is a CD box. Okay, yeah. this is all like jab sawed and drilled and it's awful and it's like a prototype. What was that supposed to be? I actually a had teleprompter? I had a camera in here, I had a monitor on it, I had it a lot. Well, this actually did work as a prompter. That's how you shot this old nerd was no, it that? No, this is how I shot a dinosaur show. But we you made had a lot a show called a dinosaur show. It was show? called Dinosaurs before they were fuels. It was about <laughs> dinosaur news, which uh, That's awesome. I never ever showed people on this old nerd how to make the prompter. Just because I just needed to use it, so <laughs> you were uh, reading it. I was just doing it, and so people have sent in emails and asking about, "Hey, I want to make my own prompter." There's lots of videos out there, lots of sites you can go to, and I wanted to revise this gloriously hideous box into something a lot prettier. Um, so let me explain what a teleprompter is, because people it. might want to kind of know what it is. You see them sometimes, uh, all the time. If you watch the inauguration, uh, for instance, you might have seen a glass, tilted glass panel in front of the president. Sometimes there's two there and there. Uh, if you've ever watched Anchorman, the TV or the movie show with it, there's a teleprompter. That's a very common look at teleprompters. In fact, that's exactly what our screensavers teleprompters looked like. All of them have the same basic idea. On the bottom, that's a computer screen, and above it is a one-way mirror. Now, the computer screen has the text you want to read on it, your text of your speech or the script for the show, and it's playing it back, scrolling it smoothly and slowly, often there's a prompter operator. If you're by yourself, you might be doing it either at an automatic scroll speed or even with a foot pedal. The funny thing is, in order for that to work, the text has to be backwards. Right, because that's a mirror. Because that's a mirror. And what it's going to do is it's going to bounce up against the one-way mirror. And you probably have seen this yourself with a pane of glass. If you angle a pane of glass at 45 degrees like that, it reflects whatever's in front of it. But you see behind it there, you see there's a camera lens. And the camera sees right through it. It's a pane of glass from the point of view of the camera. So the camera can shoot. I can be looking right at the camera, but instead of seeing the camera, I'm seeing the reflected text in that tilted pane of glass. That's what those panes of glass you see in front of the president are. They, you, you say, well, what could that be? It's just a pane of glass. Well, below it, which you don't see, is text being reflected up into it, and he can see, if he looks left and right, the text of his speech. The show host can see, stay classy, San Diego, right in there in front of the uh, in front of the uh, screen. Yeah, if you look behind the glass, you see that there's a hood back there because if any light gets to that lens while it's trying to look through, you're going to see the text there. You don't want that, so you want to make sure it's all covered up. And that's actually one of the reasons why I did a box design in the first place because, well, I looked into buying prompters, and man, are they expensive. And I was just doing web video. I didn't. I was just starting out. I wanted to see what I could do, and uh, I decided to do this with a project box. Did a lot of cutting to make it look like this, and you're going to see what's going to go into this. But let's show you how exactly you should prep uh, a project box if you're going to make a prompter. You can see it on the video. 
What we're going to do is we're going to build a teleprompter in a box. Now this is an $8 craft box from a store called Michael's. You can probably find this anywhere. And the reason why we're going with this is that it's wood. So we can cut this, we can add things to this, we can do lots of different things. So let me show you how this is going to be situated. You can see I have it upside down, you'll see why in a second. We're going to have our camera in this part of it, the lid itself. We're going to attach this 7-inch USB monitor to the base here. Obviously, we have to have a cutout for the monitor. And then this, the actual box, acts as a hood. Now, what we have to do is cut out a piece so the camera can look out. We have to cut out in the, a bit in the back so we can route cables. And the reason why we're doing this hood style is because we want to block any light coming in. When you have that reflective material that we'll have in between, it might be glass. In our case, it'll be plastic. You don't want any light coming in because then the camera will actually see the text that's going by. So this will effectively block out all the light. What we're going to need for this project is a whole bunch of things. So obviously you have the 7-inch USB monitor. We've got a camera. Uh, got some levels and straight edges, pencils, clamps. Some tool safety tips, by the way. We're going to be using a jigsaw in conjunction with a drill to do things. Don't plug in your power tools until you're ready to use them because you don't want to accidentally grab this and it'll go off because this is not a pleasant experience with yourself and when you're going to use any of these tools wear your safety goggles so i guess i gotta do some measuring and we can do some cutting and we can set up this box so what we're going to do is we're going to put our usb monitor where it's going to be located on the lid so what we're going to do is simply line up things with our hands and draw a line for where it will be with our pencil now, you can see that there's power on this side. We want to have a cutout a little bit on this side for that. Now, I've measured out the bezel. So it's about a 10 16 of an inch. So I'm going to draw some lines here and then simply cut it out. We're actually going to measure a half an inch. Now, one of the things you'll see is I'm putting the ruler a little bit over to the left. This is the edge of the ruler. This could be all worn down. I like doing it this way. That way, I don't run into the issue of it being inaccurate. So we'll do half an inch here. I mean, this is, this is pretty much just a guide. I mean, I don't know if you can cut this straight. I don't think I can cut this straight, but we'll find out. You don't want to hold this by yourself. I think that's a really silly idea, especially if you're using a drill or a jigsaw. That's just dangerous. So we're using this clamp to keep our lid on the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some pilot holes around these points here. We're going to use a half an inch bit so we can actually put pilot holes in the corner. You can't just take a jigsaw and jab it right through. That's just not the way it works. So you drill, you drill your, your pilot holes. This is obviously larger than the, the actual blade. This should work just fine. So now I'm going to drill these pilot holes. Again, you could probably use this cutout to use your jigsaw. I like having pilot holes just as points of reference. So this part will be cut out, and that should line up pretty much where our our uh, power button is. We line up our monitor. We have a nice, good cutout for our, our power and our brightness right here. Uh, we also need to mount a camera to this. So we're going to take our camera. We have to put it here. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in the bottom here that will line up with the mount point of the camcorder itself. So we're placing our camera in the actual box lid. And what we want to do, make sure you don't put the camera up against the actual base here because you're going to have that box top coming down. So what you want to do is just kind of slightly move it with the box or whatever. If you want to measure the box lid, you can. So move your camera slightly forward. And what you got to do is figure out how to get that mount point lined up with the base of this. Now, I'm probably going to eyeball it because that's usually what I do. But you probably should do a measurement or something because, come on. You're doing this right for the first time, right? So what we've done, we've turned the box lid over so we can take a look at where the mount point should be. Because of this particular box lid, like I said, was built for a picture to be displayed, there was this cutout. And if I move the camera just slightly, you can see that the mount point is pretty much almost directly underneath this point, which means this could be a break point if you're not particularly careful. I'm using a, what kind of drill bit am I using today? I'm using a 15th. 15 64 drill bit to put a hole for a bolt that will fit through this lid so we can put a bolt through it that can mount to our camera. Okay. Got our mount point. Now, what I want to do is I want to see if that was a good point to do the drilling because I could be completely wrong. So I'm going to test out the bolt that I have for the Canon. 
see if it fits. Just pretty much right now I want to see where things are going to fit once this is all together. Is there enough clearance space in the back here for me? Probably. What I would like to do at this point is probably do a little cutout right here because let's put the box lid on it again. I'll need a cutout. Oh good, I gave enough space. I'm going to need a cutout right around here so I can have the HDMI cable or in this case we're going to be using Firewire so that'll be right there. So that'll actually work just nicely. So now we've got the camera in the box. You're just getting the idea of how this is going to take shape. There'll be a monitor here. Uh, we're going to figure out where the other cuts should go. So we're putting the box lid on top. I left enough room there. We're going to have to do a cutout on this side so the camera can see and a cutout on this side to get our cables in. So we're going to keep doing that now. Obviously the camera needs a space to look out. That would be a large hole here. Before you do that though, you probably want to cut out a spot for our cables on the back end. This box is very fragile and if you do not have a point to clamp it down, you could destroy it like the first box I had that I tried out the other day. So on our Canon we have a, a DB spot and a power plug there. So what we want to do is put a hole somewhere around there. You could measure this. I'm going to leave myself some nice big room this way so probably around here. So I'm going to turn this around because I need to see it. So I'm going to do a point here, a point here. I probably want to cut out part of the lid here too so I have space if I want to get to other things. And I'm going to make this a little wider just for safety because I don't want to find out that I can't put my plugs through this. So I'm going to start putting some holes in this box so I can cut out this cutout for cables. Make sure you wear your goggles people. Things will go flying. I know I have glasses but I also need goggles because you know sometimes things get in and your producer is watching you and their children watching this so we don't want them to take the wrong idea so you're just gonna have to go with the flow. All right so now we've got a big fat cutout for our cables. Uh, you might want to sand this down later. If I've got time I'll sand it down. If I don't have time you'll know I didn't have time. So now that I've got this side I need to put a big hole on the opposite side of the box so I can actually have the camera operational. And since we cut out that small piece we actually have points that we can clamp to on the bottom. You will not have those points if you cut out the big piece first. Trust me on that one. We're going to leave about half an inch around uh, of the actual box. We have some structure still left in this thing. So we're just going to draw some lines. So we have some guides when we're cutting with our jigsaw. Now depending on how um, what's the word? Obsessive you are. You could be measuring out everything all you want. Uh, I'm doing a lot of this by eyeballing because I've done this a couple of times. Uh, you can be taking a ruler like I was doing before with the monitor. I believe the monitor is the most important thing to measure out because you want to be able to see that full screen there. Everything else is about building this hood properly. And now it's like a little garage, right? That's what we've got going here. It's pretty simple. So we've got our box top, which is now our base. We've got our lid here. And if we did anything right, we'll find out soon enough. So obviously the camera can see through here. We should cut this part out as well. I'm going to line that up just because I like consistency. Before we cut up the rest of the box, we're going to remove this pretty sensitive camera. You know, I don't want to break that. Watch your fingers. Don't put them on this side. Okay. The stressful part is over. You can see that the box remains intact. Like I said, this is a project box. It's $8, so it might fall apart. You could be using other materials if you wanted. I'm used to using wood, so I'm using wood. And do yourself a favor, never cut towards yourself. Okay, so I believe we've prepped the box of every hole we needed to put into it right now. So let's, let's see what this looks like if we put everything together. We have our lid, we'll put our monitor here. Probably want to clean up some of these edges here. Put our camera down to there. We've got a tripod mount that we've modified slightly. We're going to attach to that so this whole thing can sit on a tripod. We're going to take our box lid, see that on top. And if the camera was in there, it would look fine. We do need to affix some more things, but the box itself is now prepped. Let's go back to me in the studio standing. <laughs> Thanks, me. I, as you did a it's great the job. box. Yeah, so this this is, is the one that broke. This is the one I tried out first. Now what I did with this one by mistake was I cut out the large part first, nothing to clamp down. Right. When I tried to drill a hole, smashed this thing in half. It just ripped it. So that was the first box. That's why we do this. 
We can toss that so aside. So that you have the experience to know, don't do that way. And so I did have time to sand the Look edges that. because looks nice. we found the one piece of sandpaper at Twit, and I got to do that. You left it on my desk. Oh, yeah, did I? Good. Yeah. I, well, that was just a, I thought it was for my fingers. It was a hint, you know, when your nails are a little bit. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, so it's all smoothed out. You know, you could tape it up or do whatever you want. I'm used to, used to doing tape. You know what's cool? I've never seen anybody do this before. You're solving the fundamental problem of a teleprompter, which is a camera has to be dark. But you also make this kind of a portable kit that you could carry with you anywhere. Uh, did, did you see plans for this somewhere? I hadn't seen a box-shaped one. I've seen things for stands, and I've seen ones to sit on a shelf. But for some reason, I had this case sitting around, and I'm it's like, very clever. I could put this anywhere. Put a camera, I could bring it. So now it's a portable Prompter Plus camera, mm -hmm. and all you have to do, you can even be outside, and nobody's going to think you're too weird. You just Plop it up. Well, wait, I show us how this is going to work, though. Well, before I assemble I'm still everything. I'm not sure how it works. Before I assemble everything, okay. we should thank our friends at Mantronics. That I can do. Let me just tuck in my shirt tails here if I want to go to work. That's true. It's I very agree. important. That's just like safety goggles. You've got to <laughs> tuck in your shirts. And tighten up my wire there. You know who Lantronics is? Do you know who Lantronics is? I've heard of them. They make the Xprint server? Have you seen that? I have one in my house. So you yes, do. I've, I've seen so one. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. This is true. I am amazed at the number of people who watch these uh, shows who say, yeah, I got the Lantronics Xprint server. It's amazing. We get email all the time. It's one of those products where, I, you know, I hadn't really heard about it, and we tried it, and we said, wow, this is pretty cool. We started talking about it, and people are going crazy about it. So what does it do? Well, this is a Lantronics Xprint server. It's very simple, really. There's power. There's an Ethernet jack, and there's a USB port. There's no software to run, no configuration, nothing. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. You plug it into your Ethernet, you plug it into a USB printer, uh, and you power it up. Now, all of a sudden, that USB printer is a network printer. It's on your network. It's visible. And more importantly, you can print right to it using Apple's AirPrint technology from an iPad or an iPhone. So it takes a USB printer and makes it compatible with iOS. In addition to all of that, it puts it on the network so that printer can now be shared in the network and it automatically discovers all your network printers and makes them all AirPrint compatible. So now you can print to any printer you've got, up to 4,000 different printers are supported by this. You can share your USB printer over the network and, you, it, and you've got a complete directory of all your network printers. It's a remarkable device. Here's the best part, 99 bucks. Now there is a, that's the home version, that's a eight USB printers and up to two network printers. If you're in a big office, you can have unlimited network printers with the business edition, the office edition. That's $199.95. So pick the Xprint server that's right for you. You'll get free shipping when you use the offer code TWIT. So go to xprintserver.com slash TWIT to find out more. Lantronics makes this. It is the sweetest little thing, you know. You don't have to install any apps on your iOS device. It, it's just an AirPrint now. It's an AirPrint compatible. You'll see it when you go to the print menu on your iPad. All of a sudden, you plug this in. All of a sudden, you're printing to any printer. I, I really love it. xprintserver.com slash twit. You know who you are if you need this. It is a lifesaver. And at 99 bucks, it's a lot more affordable than anything else on the market. Nothing else comes closer. Yeah, that, I'm, does all this I'm stuff. sure our audience has set up a bunch of network printers for their parents, for themselves. Yeah, it's painful. And once butt. you get that working, you never want to mess with it. And that's why I'm like, well, if there's a thing that could make my iPad work with it yeah. as well and not mess up my network, right. that's the way to go instead of replacing it and try to set it up all over it's again. It's perfect for our, uh, our know-how audience because uh, they're, they're exactly right. They're the people we're setting up for everybody else in their families. That's a, all that's right. That's great. Okay. Back to making our teleprompter. You've built the uh, the box, box that this is going to go in. Now, this okay. lid is actually, some people were saying I should reinforce this. I agree with that, uh, but this is actually a bit sturdy, and I've been testing this uh, overnight, and it worked okay. It actually held together. So what I'm going to do is attach this camera to the actual plate here. Well, I'm gonna, it's not a permanent attachment. You're just going to use the normal threads for the tripod. Uh, well, I mean, so this is a normal tripod mount from a like a $30 tripod like right. I got it from Best Buy right so I'm going to affix it actually somewhat permanently when it comes to this You're because glue it in there well I'm gonna thread it in you can always unthread it but I'm gonna use a bolt that's the same size this is a quarter inch bolt they call it quarter inch 20 and this will fit into any standard uh, any that's standard mount very useful to know quarter inch 20 is so what works on that if you have a different like let's say you have a much deeper uh, box you might want to get a new bolt this was too small so I needed to switch it out so I don't what I that's did with the, this. That's the bolt that comes on most right. tripod heads. This is just a few turns. So this comes apart. I have a spare, so I'm going to use that one. Yeah. So I'm going to attach this. Remove the old bolt. Yeah, put so in your new long bolt. I put my bolt in. Going to line up. What I'm going to do, though, because this bolt's a little long, and also I'm kind of concerned about 
the amount of wood that's around there, I want to make sure that there's enough reinforce pressure. reinforce that there. Yeah, Put a washer down a there. Idea. And for the height issue, because this might be too, this is too long to go directly into the camera, I'm putting some nuts in for spacers. And if I had some more, uh, more tools, I'd actually have another washer here to give some support to the actual camera, but I don't have that right now. So what I'm gonna do is attach this. You have to bear with me as I'm trying to. So it's fairly easy to remove the camera yeah. from this box. What I'm going to do You'd is kind of like this tripod mount to be permanent. I like doing because you don't want to have to unscrew it. All I like the time. doing the permanent thing. A lot of people are like, why not do an iPad or, or use something like that? Because I like using my iPad as an iPad. I'm going to use a USB monitor here for this. I, I effectively like to leave this set up because I'll be doing things later with it. So we got our cutout for the. Uh, the power of the HDMI. I there. love this idea. I've never seen a, a, a teleprompter with kind of an integrated camera into it. Uh, the other thing was that my old box, this is, the, this is a little It had a silly handle and you can carry it around. The crazy thing inside of it, it, there up. was actually a <laughs> phantom power supply. Oh, for your could, mic. Because this is a Canon HV20, has a mic in. I wanted to use an XLR what with it. What a great idea. Everything used to fit in this box, but you can always use a different design. All right. All right, let's keep building this. If you got, you know, they make a, a thing called a beach tech that would go right on the top oh, yeah. there and would give you the quarter inch jack, and then it would have phantom power supply for the uh, microphone. And what I should that do. Should, that's small enough that probably fit in that what box. What I'm going to do now, I'm sure you guys are going to mock me for it because I'm sure I could have done this with, with brackets and I could have done this with anything else. I'm going to use my old pal Gaffer tech. That's why they invented it. This is a seven inch USB monitor that's going to act as our monitor. This How much a, was that? This was 99 bucks. Okay. It's still about $99 out there. The reason why I like using this is because I like controlling things with my computer. Okay. You could use other devices. You can maybe want to put an iPhone or something, but I think it's a little too small. Seven right. inches, I had a good distance for that. So I'm going to tape that to the bottom of this. So it's going to sound silly, but that's the way it works. You know, duct tape is like the force. The force. It has a light side and a dark side, and it holds the universe together. For the most part, yeah. But gaffer tape cuts easier, so I'm going to use that. <laughs> and I'm making Alex laugh. He's working the camera right now. If you're seeing these, he's actually over using the... gaffer's tape, which is uh, a tape that's a little bit more removable, not quite as yeah. sticky as duct tape. Uh, but it's, it's for this purpose just it, as strong. You know, the weird thing is I've had this work for a very long time. It yeah. holds up. I've never had a problem with this. You could probably put on way too much tape. But then again, it comes off really easily. Yeah. And like I said, there's the cutout for the power and things. So I'm just going to keep taping this up. Gaffer's tape is kind of like painter's tape. It's not paper, but it's pretty easy to tear. Easy to it's tear. It's got a sturdy. Mi mild. It's sturdy enough, though, yeah. It's got a, a mild adhesive, so you don't have to worry about removing it. All right, so I'm going to yeah. keep doing this. So this is going to take a little bit. Kirok says, gaffer's tape is greater than duct tape. Well, if gaffers use it, that's about right. Gaffers are lighting guys, by the way. Some the guys who do up. the uh, lighting. But any, any, any uh, stage hand or grip would have a roll of gaffer's tape hanging from his belt by a little piece of rope. So you can see this is really a tight belt. You can see the camera's right over the monitor. This is this, this box. I mean, this is really tiny. So hopefully, and I know this will work, it'll continue to work. We're going to also have to put in a reflective surface like a mirror. We're not going to use a mirror, though. We're going to use something you probably have lots of. So let me put this aside. Oh, what is that? Let me think. OK, you so get lots this. Lots of it. It's not as. You probably, like, OK, so you can oh, use Oh, you, can you use are anything. clever. You can use anything this you want. This is not going to work. This really? Is work. OK, so you could use picture frame glass if you have it, something okay. that fits this. I don't happen to have that. Paint it clear glass. If you have, have one-way mirror, that'd be great. That'd be the you best. You don't need to, though. These are not mirrored. They're just clear pieces of glass. I'm going to use a, a CD. CD cover. So what I'm going to do, though, the top of mine this is all This actually stuck. works? This is what I used to use. Would you believe it? Wow. So I'm going to just pop off. Same issue, though. You know, you're going to refract. It's going to reflect at a 45-degree angle. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. You look around to your CDs and see which one has the least amount of marring on it. Yeah, you don't want scratches. Yeah, because yeah. scratches will show up. So yeah. what I'm doing is, if, if you notice the, glass would work. the back, this, this I always find is the, the better coated side. Oh, I'll remove that the piece. top. Look at that. It's so nice and clear. Okay, yeah, so nobody's been using that. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is try to get this in here. I know this Car is... Car windshield. That'd be fine. Whatever you have. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> if you have, if it's reflective I and you can believe, see through it... I can't believe this is going to work. It's going to work. So let me just show you how this, how it works. So if you're, if it's see-through if you're at a right angle to it, but as you tilt it, you get to the proper refraction index, it starts to reflect. It becomes a mirror. Now, we don't have much to reflect up above there, but you'll see how well this will work with the, the text 
from the uh, little seven inch screen. I'm loving the, the MacGyver comparisons. This yeah. is very MacGyver. This is going to work. Need some chewing gum and. Uh... I need a paper clip and I can do something. So, what I'm going to do now, I would <laughs> love to one day build a hinge or something to hold this. Right now, this is, I want to get a project done. So, I'm going to use more tape. That's right, I said it. I'm going to use tape. And that's going to let me adjust the angle a little bit. And the weird thing is, it just sits, excuse me, as I rustle the microphone. I'm trying to get my angle. Excuse, let me get my head in the way. That angle's too much. Kirok says, I used to use 35 millimeter film canisters for everything. Remember those little plastic canisters? They were great for holding your seeds and stems. Just need to. But now they don't make them anymore. Where do you get those, you know? Let me just adjust my angle. That should do it, actually. Strangely Reflection enough. and refraction, that's right. Let me take a look. How are we looking right now? I know that looks crazy. You're probably going to see the tape because I can't adjust that right now. So, we got this. That is really... All right. You, this, I can't look, believe... This is going to work. This is going to work? This is going to work. Okay. I don't, I don't believe it. All right, it. so let's see. Uh, I should probably hook it up to some software. What an idea, right? No. So this is what's an interesting thing. The reason you got the USB monitor is because you can have a very long cable. The whole issue with teleprompters, as I mentioned at the beginning, is you've got to have the text on it, you've got to have it reversed, and you have to have it scroll. So there is software available on most computers yeah, there's that software makes that fairly easy. And a website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a tripod across the way. So that way... Don't try to get this through the TSA this either, is gonna, right? <laughs> this is a scary looking... Yeah, that box I used to use, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to use that very much. Yeah. But you could paint this and probably do this a lot nicer than I'm doing. And excuse me as I'm trying to see what I'm doing because it's tight in here. Get in there. Will this be for sale on the Twit store? Asks Ottawa Paul in our chat. Uh, I have, I doubt it. But. <laughs> yeah, just search for ghetto teleprompter. And I, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's actually on the wow, thing. Wow, look at that. The crazy thing that, is beca because of how small this is, it actually works. sits on a, on a pretty cheap uh, now, these are, this is a fairly fancy tripod, but you don't have to have a big, heavy-duty tripod. You can get a cheap one. Well, this one is actually not that pricey. It was really? Best Buy a while ago. I would, I'd say maybe 50 bucks max. Okay, good. Because I, I was on a budget then. I'm still on a budget now. Okay. So this, so that's powered up. It needs USB, though, because that's a USB-powered monitor. Wow, you can go a B&H photo and buy plastic film canisters. In a 25-pack, I'm amazed. Thank right. you, Eric Duckman, in our chat room. And the question is, did I leave myself enough room to put the USB? Yes, I did. If you watch our show live, you can always participate via chat. We watch the chat during all of our programming here at the Twit Network. The chat's on big screens all around us. And uh, it's at irc.twit.tv. And it's fun if you're watching live. It's one of the reasons we do it live, so that you can participate. See, there's the screen with the chat scrolling by. I could probably put the chat in the teleprompter if I wanted to. Look at that. There's so the camera. Right now, right now, actually. No, wow, I can can't believe see? it. It's actually working. It's, it's reflecting. I see it. Oh, because the angle's not so good. The dock. Well, that's the it. thing. The key is getting that angle just right. Is it 45 degrees exactly? No, not yet. It's not. But I mean, that's what you want. This right? is, I think that would be really good. Look at how well that's reflecting. So, right now, so. That's if, a freaking CD case. That's a CD case. Can we go back to the HB20 to see what that looks like through it? Are you seeing the text? No, you're not. I, uh, I think I you see. see reflection back there. That's the thing. I'm going to start messing with the text, and you can see how that's going to work. Yeah, or if it's so, yeah. that's the view from the camera. It's not seeing the text, but on this side, yeah, so right now, we see the prompter text. Yeah, Look so at that. That actually, and you is, can kind of see the camera through there, but that's fine. That's pretty typical. That, that's about as bright as a regular teleprompter. I'm amazed. That's ridiculously small, and it's simple. It's portable. But and, now, put some text on there. What are you going to use for software? Okay, now I used a piece of software. My favorite piece of software was called Presentation Prompter. There's okay. a bunch of free stuff out there that. It's free for a reason. It wasn't very good. Presentation prompters, Mac OS X only. And when I got it years ago, it was $30. Now it's $100. So the prompter software I found is very, very expensive. Uh, but this is the one I'm going to show you. Uh, there's also a website called QPrompter, C-U-E. I'm familiar with that one. Yeah. Now, it lets you do 2,000 characters, I believe. There's a maximum. For free. for free. And you can run it through a web browser. So if you want to test it out, do it on a budget. That's a great one. And at Twit, for i5, we use something called FlipQ. That starts at $200. That's software for Windows only. So it's a pretty pricey thing. And so far, our, our, thing, our, our most pricey thing here was the camera. And I got that years ago. So we're going to try to use Presentation Prompter right now. Uh, a little uh, finesse, perhaps, Weird MI suggests, maybe panning the inside of that box black to give it oh, even yes. more darkness. The whole point is that you don't want any light coming through the prompter uh, pain. That's why you put the camera in a real prompter in a bag or 
something like that. <laughs> now, funnily, funnily enough, the uh, the USB monitor is turned into my primary monitor, so I'm looking at Quicksilver trying to launch something. So I have to I look at that I camera see. Now we're watching to the find prompter. my system preferences because I need to do a mirroring because I can't really. I mean, I really should be closer to see what's going on. <laughs> So where's my system preferences? You can see my task switcher. Like I'm trying to, there it is. It's a dock. It's going That's backwards. That's really cool. There it is. Okay, it's somewhere there. Here it is. I need to mirror my display so I can see what I'm doing. Obviously, I would imagine that if you're doing this in your own place, you could be doing this a lot easier. But displays. <clears throat> Excuse me. Visual communicator, says F and Dunn from Sirius Magic, now Adobe. Okay. Is a good podcast. So we're going to mirror this. So this is my display. It's going to be exactly over there. And so my laptop looks ridiculously small. Let's go find. But that's you only have a seven-inch uh, USB yes. monitor, so, so you I'm going to hide some things. Go find my presentation prompter. Now you see why you have a black screen because you want big white text to show up on that black All screen. All right, so this is an ah. old script I had for some show, the dinosaur show I used to do. All right. So I'm going to hit like prompt mode. So this is presentation prompter. If that's I, an editor, so you can modify the script easily. But it's, it's not the presentation mode. It's one of the best editors I've seen as a, as a, as a prompter. It had a lot of uh, customizations as to speed as well because you have a small screen over there. You want to be able to have a lot of control over the way the text is displayed, right? right. So presentation, presentation prompter gave me the most amount of tools to change fonts, to change the editing, to change the speeds, so that it would work really well with a 7-inch monitor like that. Now. The, the uh, important point to note is when we look at it in the teleprompter right now, it's backwards because it's a mirror. Right. So if I hit prompt mode. So when you go into prompt mode, it actually reverses the text. It should. If it so to. that on your screen, your computer screen, it's going to look backwards. But on the mirror in the prompter, it's going to be forward. So if you can see look right now. So I'm going to turn a little bit over here so I can read it. Story one. Last time we talked about a recent study, and I need to speed this up, that said the Triceratops and Taurosaurus were actually the same animal. What? Oh Snap. boy, did that cause a big flare up. Now, Alex is actually in the way of the camera, so I can't see it. But look how good that so looks. I'm That's reading very off of it. readable. That looks to me like a professional prompt. You want to try? You go let for me, it. Let me try it, because I'm a trained professional. You definitely are. F you, San Diego. Wait a minute. <laughs> Greatly in appearance, boingboing.net presented a food example. I think about the difference. Now, this is one issue. Too fast? No, it's not the speed. It's the, the margins right. are, in, are, are kind of encroaching on the letters. And you'll see in the software there's a, a way to increase the margin yes. size and something so that the box doesn't get in, a way, in the way. Anyway, a, a lot of people got very upset about this Triceratops discovery. <laughs> Why? First... People thought the Triceratops was no longer going to be a dinosaur. Facebook group showed an exclaiming the Triceratops name should live on and the Taurosaurus should go away. The reason I'm messing for... with the speed, obviously, live. <laughs> uh, that works great. I can't believe that kludgy little <laughs> box it's, it's, is a great teleprompter. It's technologically sound. And we I mean, paid hundreds sound. of dollars for a high-quality hardware for Veronica and Brian. Well, I I, there swear. are other, I'm, I'm telling you guys, there's probably at least like 100 other designs you could come I up like with. I like this, but that, that's compact. You can carry it around in the box. The camera's in there, the prompter's in there, everything you need. You just plug in the USB cable, put it on a, 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 a tripod, and you're ready to go. And that, yeah, so that's the prompter. I mean, it's pretty basic. Again, I'm sure you guys are going to come up with other designs, and I can't wait to see them because uh, this is just something I'm like, this is tiny, this works, but I'm sure I there's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, and uh, just it works when you want to do something that's complex. I mean, there's lots of different reasons to have a prompter, and now you know how to do that. <laughs> Why don't you go out there and make a video podcast and build a prompter of your own? And if you do that, by the way, <laughs> before you go out and do all of that stuff, you guys, by the way, if you don't know, we have a new Google Plus community out there. Uh, it's available at, uh, let, me, let me try to fix this, it's at bit.ly slash kh plus. So, I mean, it's a short version of it. If you look on Google Plus, and search for Twit Know How, you will find our brand new community. And I wanted to spotlight somebody because they were, they were participating on the community, Darlene Morrow. She wrote in and she wrote, Hey, okay. Ayaz, you've created a monster. I've rooted my Kindle Fire, <laughs> put Jelly Bean on it, jailbroken my old iPod Touch, got rid of the telco with Uma, and have only just begun. Not bad for an almost 60-year-old grandma. Thanks. Isn't that great? I thought that was awesome. Thank I'm like, Darlene, Darlene is doing this. There are a lot of people out there in the community, and I, you guys are super interactive. I'm loving this. Somebody was asking about backup options, and everyone's helping out each other at the, the uh, Twit Know How community. So if you, if you don't know about it, now you know. It's available on Google+. And that, 
I think Darlene did a great job. I'm really excited that people are doing these projects because... Yeah, let us know if you do it. Send us a picture. Show us what you've done. Uh, that's really great. I bet it looks better than that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know about how we did any of these things, if you want show notes and you want directions and links and you want all kinds of that, that stuff, we have that available at twit.tv slash kh. Trust me, there are lots of show notes. There are episodes where I go into VPNs and things. They're list but they're listed you could read the instructions and follow them it's crazy you might not even need to watch the video that's how how complete they are when it comes to show notes available at twit.tv slash kh where you can also download episodes subscribe to the to the video in glorious hd if you want to look at that card at the uh, balsa wood box in hd you you could see there what it looks go. like and how how it looks Give us an email, by the way. You guys have been sending so many ideas, great ideas. I'm just like, everyone wants, a lot of guys want Automator episodes. I'm, I'm really surprised we mentioned it last uh, week. We'll get Sal in and we'll do it. You're going to bring your pal Sal in. Sal Segoyan, the king of Automator. He's got to come down and do it. He is awesome. So give us an email at knowhow at twit.tv, and that would be great. Show ideas. Uh, if, you, if you want to build on different ideas, the community is really good for that. Any which way you want to communicate, let's let us know, because <laughs> it's great to hear from you guys. Well, thanks for watching us. Uh, we do this show every Thursday, about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern uh, time. Uh, that would be about uh, 1 in the morning UTC. But if you want to watch live all over the world, we welcome it. And, of course, we welcome you to the chat room. Otherwise, make sure you get a, a version of it, as uh, I has mentioned on YouTube or on our website, twit.tv slash kh. So, now that you know how to build a teleprompter... You should go out and do it. Make your own show. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>